Eric, obviously defensive efforts, one-on-one -on -one defense has been a lot of this series. What's it just been like seeing individual defenders kind of rise to the occasion in this series? And um, how much do you think Drew has kind of been a benefit with some of the tips and advice he's kind of given you guys as defenders throughout this year? Um, I just think that top to bottom, we trust everybody and we just compete at a high level. Um, obviously, they're, they're great players and it's a challenge, but um, just consistently being in the right position and just competing and um, Drew's literally everywhere. It's unreal. Um, I don't know how he does it. Um, try to learn as much as I can from him and he's just um, just when you think you got an opening, like he's just he's unreal. Again, here in the front. Uh, Noah Dalzell, SB Nation. Um, I was just going to ask you, you've described Jalen Brown as unreal many times during this playoff run um, and kind of talked about how he has really no weaknesses at this point. Um, you've been his teammate for a couple of years, and Joe talked earlier today about how he works with six, seven coaches to kind of figure out how to make every read. Um, what have you seen from that, from the, just the work that he's putting into practice? Do you, are you ever involved in that? And um, how do you see kind of that growth translate onto the court in the biggest moments? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, he's just a guy that just wants to learn. Um, some of the drills he does is just a little unconven unconventional, I think, but like uh, just wants to learn and wants to grow. Um, and then every year he's been in the league, he's gotten so much better. And um, I mean, that's just a credit to uh, his mindset and, and the work he puts in. So um, being his teammate has been a lot of fun. I've learned so much from him, and uh, he just continues to push me and the rest of us to, to continue to improve and, and want, to, want to get better. Fifth row on the left, Sirat. Hey, Derek. Sirat Sohi at the ringer. Um, Joe's philosophy of the closer you are to winning, uh, the closer you are to losing, it seems like that was playing out in the fourth quarter as the Mavs were making a comeback. I was just curious what he was like down the stretch there and uh, you know, if there is any degree to which he helped you guys pull together and stay poised. Yeah, um, Joe is consistent the whole time. And um, I mean, he's probably so happy that, that it happened like that so he can um, just continue to tell us that, and uh, but he just stays consistent. He just makes the right um, calls, and we just trust him completely. So, uh, but yeah, it's, it seemed pretty true today. <laughs> He's a sicko, so probably. <laughs> uh, back right. Hey, Derek, Jack Simone, SB Nation. Uh, with KP out, you guys played a lot more switch-heavy defense. Guys like Xavier Tillman, Sam Hauser really stepped up in that regard. What did you see from them and, you know, the whole team in that, you know, defensive style? Yeah, I mean, Sam's been doing it all year. Um, he gets attacked literally every time he checks into the game, and uh, we just got a lot of faith and confidence in him, and he just does what he needs to do. And then, but big shout-out to X. I mean, to not be in the rotation, but just stay locked in. And he gives us big time minutes, um, plus nine. And he just does a little bit of everything out there. Um, and then he guarded his, his ass off and, and hit a big shot and rebounded. And he just did a little bit of everything for us. And so credit to him, I mean, great, great teammate, great guy. And uh, he was big for us. Dave, on your left, second row. Derek, watching you guys, it's so apparent that you know, one through whatever in your rotation. Everyone's out there to contribute, as you just mentioned, with Tillman. But when you get into a late game scenario, how does the group rely on guys like no, the, the two guys in Jalen and Jason? And obviously they made some plays down the stretch after Dallas cut it. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously the strength of this team is the team. Um, but we understand that JB and JT, um, they're our guys, and they're going to make big plays, and they're going to make uh, the right play. I think that's the most important part is just um, we trust them to make the right play um, every time down the court, and they're, they're facing literally every coverage known to man, and uh, they just make the right play no matter what time's on the score or time's on the clock, and uh, we just trust them so much. On your left in the front, Mark. Hey, Derek. Mark D'Amico, Celtics.com. <clears throat> it felt like this game – is a game that a lot of the Celtics naysayers coming into the series might have thought that you guys would have lost. Uh, maybe in past seasons, you might have given this one up. What do you think has gone into the change in these moments, uh, both individually, uh, guys on the team, and collectively? Um, I mean, I think 
experience always helps. Um, I mean, you have a lot of guys that have been uh, in close games and in big games, and so um, I just don't think we panic probably as much as we have in the past, and um, we just try to stay calm and, and do what we need to do. So, um, I mean, who knows if we would have lost these games in the past, but um, we just know we got so many different ways to win games and trust that we can find the answer and just do whatever it takes to win. Fourth row in the center. Hey, Derek. Bobby Kravitsky, SI Media Group. Earlier this season, Joe said about Drew Holiday that it doesn't matter if he's having a good game or it's not going well for him. You can never tell based on his body language. How does that even-keeled approach, has that helped you guys stay calm in the most challenging moments? Yeah, it's, it's big time. Um, he just stays stays right here. He competes on the defensive end like always. And offensively, you could take nine shots. He take one shot. Like, he doesn't care and just does whatever it takes for us to win. So just having the team is just a big blessing. Tim, on the left, standing. Derek, you guys obviously had that slow start. Then you played great for most of the next three quarters. And then that early part of the fourth quarter, things kind of went haywire again. You know, what did you see go sideways there for you guys? And then what allowed you to reset again like you did in that second half of the first quarter to close things out in the end? Yeah, um, I think just and we had some turnovers, uh, which allowed them to, to get out in transition. And um, just a couple of things that we've been doing really well, we kind of just let go of the rope for um, however many minutes that was. It seemed like, what, the two minutes? They, they cut it to, what, three or something? So um, it happened quick, and we just um, settled back down and um, just understand it's a game of runs, and we just trust what we do. Abby, on the left. Abby Jen, NBC Sports Boston. Now you're one win away. What were you guys saying to each other in the locker room? What's Joe's message coming out? Uh, I mean, obviously, the, the closer you are to win, and it's a, you know, that's his go-to. That was obviously said. Uh, <laughs> but uh, just understand that we need to play better. Uh, Closeout games are, are never easy, and the closeout game in the finals is probably um, 10 times of that. So um, learn a lot from what we did well, what we uh, need to do, and just understand we got to have to play even better for next game. Last two on the right side here in the second row, and then Jared. Hey, Derek, Andrew Callahan for the Boston Herald. Uh, Jalen had both baskets to answer Dallas after they cut it to one possession there in the last three and a half minutes. I think it was a putback and then the foul line jumper. What do you remember about those plays, and what do they say about Jalen? Yeah, big time. Big time shots. Uh, just a guy that I mean, he wanted the ball and um, was able to get to his spot and rise up and knock it down. Um, he makes tough shots, um, and he's just a, a special player. Jared, last question on the right. Jared Weiss, The Athletic. When you got here, your teammates demanded that you shoot threes. Coaching staff demanded you shoot demanded. threes. Demanded, whoa. I mean, it was, they were pretty adamant about it. And uh, Joe has built this system where all the reads are, a lot of them are set up to create open threes, and you kind of three-point attempt teams until you eventually kind of have that advantage. And tonight, Luca and Kyrie, they were scoring on the inside, but you guys kept taking those threes and the math worked in your favor. How, how has that worked for you guys kind of over the long term? And now that you're at the precipice of potentially winning a championship, how valuable do you think Joe's approach has been for you? Um, I think Joe is a, a basketball genius. Uh, so whatever he says, I'm going to try to just do it my highest capabilities. And um, I mean, we just try to make the right basketball play every time down the court, uh, whether that's a three.